The creator of One Punch Man 1 recently confirmed the fact that we were all completely wrong when it comes to understanding what Saitama's true power really is. And I feel like no one's been really talking about this as much as they should because it's a big deal. So I mean, I, I just had to. I cover One Punch Man on this channel after all each and every week. And if that sounds like a good time to you, by the way, then make sure to subscribe if you like this video. But anyway, essentially what I'm saying here is that we had the wrong idea about Saitama's quote unquote limitless strength for over 150 chapters and I put quotes around limitless because technically his strength isn't limitless but also at the same time it actually kind of is. So yeah, where you stand on that confusing statement actually all depends on your understanding of one of the most iconic moments of Saitama's incredible fight with Garo in chapter 166 of the manga. But before we get into the weeds of all that though, it's important to remember how Saitama ended up as the strongest bald guy of all time in the first place, zooming past Krillin and narrowly beating Dom Toretto. In the beginning, Saitama was an aimless and unmotivated guy in his mid 20s 20s, who happened to find his calling as a hero after saving a kid with a massive chin from Crablante, a monster that's actually confirmed to have been a disaster level tiger, which would normally take an A-class hero to beat, so really Saitama was built different from the very beginning, but that's not the point of this video, I digress. After finally finding his calling, Saitama sets on his journey to become the strongest by training his body every day with a strict workout routine and conditioning his body by doing things things like turning the heat up in the summer and turning the AC on in the winter, which eventually leads to the Saitama we meet in the first episode or chapter. He's become a blank expressioned, much balder Saitama that can one-shot any opponent that stands in his way. His power seems boundless, seeing as how no matter how large scaled and insane his opponents become, one punch is always what it takes, and Saitama put in as much effort into doing so as you probably did flipping or scrolling to the next next page of the chapter. It was crazy and honestly comical to think that a simple routine of push-ups, sit-ups, and squats could possibly bring on such a result. And it actually wasn't cleared up how this was even possible until chapter 86 of the manga. In this chapter, Giro Giro explains the process of creating a powerful monster, which is essentially pushing the subject to the brink of death over and over by putting them through extreme conditions, in turn making them stronger and stronger every time. Also during this chapter, Dr. Genus explains the existence of the limiter, which is this biological ceiling placed on every living thing's potential, with Saitama being the only known organism to have straight up removed his, which in turn has made him insanely strong. There are other nuances to the limiter, but I've talked about it in detail plenty of times in other videos, so make sure to check out those if you want some more info on the limiter. The important takeaway from all of this though is that this chapter finally answers the burning question. How did Saitama get so damn strong? And it did this by explaining how it happened and why it happened. The how being when Saitama removed his limiter and the why being explained by constant stress Saitama was put through during his training. It comes off as a gag initially but the training Saitama put himself through for three years did actually consistently put him in an extreme environment long enough to where he gradually pushed past his limits over and over over again until he literally had no more limits to push. So now understanding all of that, it would be an accurate statement to say that Saitama's strength is truly limitless, right? I mean, guy removing limiter equals limitless, right? That just that just makes sense. Well, not exactly. And this is what the majority of the One Punch Man fandom, including myself, believed for a long time until chapter 166. In this chapter, we pick up at the height of Saitama versus Garo, where the power scaling had eventually gotten to Dragon Ball Z levels of just pure silliness, punches that destroy solar systems, sneezes that blow off the entire surface of Jupiter, farts that can move at light speed, you name it. Well as this insane battle raged on the floating rubble of the moon of Io, Garo notices that Saitama is starting to pull away from him in terms of power. This is when we get the now iconic set of pages that read, Saitama was continuing to grow. Until now, no one had equaled him in strength or noticed 
his growth. However, due to intense emotion, his abilities were rising exponentially. He was even pulling away from the only person capable of observing his growth. Perhaps no one existed who could even fathom his new heights of strength. And then he goes on, like I said, to blow off the entire surface of Jupiter with a sneeze. Again, much like Saitama's training, this is one kind of masking the truth in kind of this comical scene of him blowing away the entire surface of Jupiter. Also, this is all said while displaying a graph showing a line with Saitama's derpy face separating farther and farther away from Garo's line, indicating that Saitama's exponential growth was much more exponentialier than Garo's. And that's saying a ton seeing as how we just spent like 80 chapters prior witnessing Garo go from this regular human with pretty insane martial arts skills to someone that can straight up destroy entire planets if he wanted to. So this is where the true secret to Saitama's power is revealed, and it literally blew my mind when I first read it, which is why I was initially surprised that not that many people were talking about it. Essentially, what these few pages describe is the fact that Saitama's strength was never actually limitless. It was just so far above everyone else's level of strength that it just seemed limitless. It's like if you're flying a spaceship to the end of the known universe or something, assuming that there is one of course, but just imagine there is one for the sake of this example. So alright, you're flying to the end of the universe. In theory, you'd be able to reach it eventually, but in reality, no human can come remotely close to reaching the end before they die or something. Therefore, to us humans with our limited lifespans and ability to comprehend the vastness of space, the universe just seems limitless. And this is how the humans of One Punch Man and us the readers were observing Saitama's strength up until this fight, because this all changed when Gar received a massive god buff that allowed him to grow strong enough to begin approaching Saitama's level of power by matching him blow for blow. The truly crazy part about all this though is that this also means that Saitama has been continuously growing stronger and stronger this entire time at a rate that is completely unobtainable by any other living being, making it seem like Saitama's strength was limitless when in reality his growth potential was the thing that was truly limitless. I'm sure some of you guys are already getting it by now, but to, you know, us smooth brains out there, just imagine this scenario. Imagine your phone has a power level reading app or something, where you can simply aim your camera at someone and get a reading on their stats, and pretty much have their overall strength summarized in a number shown on the screen right next to them. Essentially a scouter from Dragon Ball Z, right? If you used it on Saitama and your phone didn't explode, it wouldn't just show infinity symbols. That was kind of the original line of thinking when we all thought thought that Saitama's power was limitless. Well, what you'd likely be getting is a one with a ton of zeros at the end of it, but even if those zeros on the screen appear to be too many to count, it would be a finite number nonetheless. At the end of the day, does it really matter? I mean, to us, no, because it's likely that no one in this series is ever going to approach the power that Saitama has, or even approach the power that Garo had during their fight, save for, you know, the final arc, of course, or like a fight with God or something. So either way, Saitama is going to be unbeatable. But what I do think is that this is an interesting little detail that might open the door to some crazy plot twists going forward. Like, and I know I'm going continuously to Dragon Ball examples, in a recent Dragon Ball arc where Granola wishes to be the strongest in the universe, only to find out that being made the strongest in the universe at that time doesn't exclude others from growing stronger than him from that point, there could be a scenario where, like, this evil organization creates a clone of Saitama or something, and he's just as strong as him, but he doesn't have a removed limiter like Saitama does. So eventually Saitama ends up winning the fight, like in Garo fashion or something, where it's hard fought for a bit, but he comes out on top in the end. Or I don't know, replace clone with cyborg, whatever you think is the most fun. 